Hey guys, uh, I'm Andrew. I'm the uh, extraction technologist uh, over at Whistler Technologies. Today we are at uh, Earthwolf Farms helping out harvest some of uh, this beautiful biscotti that they have growing in the uh, light depth greenhouses here. We've got some beautiful super resinous buds that will be getting processed in uh, some of our WT300s down uh, over at their lab. And so uh, today we're going to be going over some harvest tips and uh, you know covering some of the techniques that we've been talking about on our uh, webinar and on our Instagram there. Here we are uh, in the field of Earthwolf Farms and uh, we have uh, a section here that's going to be getting harvested in about uh, two weeks or so coming up. Um, so we're going to start doing a bit of defoliation to prepare for that harvest. Um, now ideally we want to remove as many leaves as we can prior to harvest as that'll save time um, when actually getting stuff ready for the freezer as well as um, with leaves that are closer to buds it'll reduce areas on the stem um, that are going to be more likely to leach out chlorophyll. By doing this um, earlier on we give some time for the plant to heal those areas so it doesn't have an open spot where chlorophyll can leach out very easily from the stem here. Uh, so as you'll see, uh, one point I always try to do is uh, just grabbing plants by the stem where it gives me a nice point of grip and I can get access to the leaves. So on this branch here, I'll grab it and then from here I'm going to start removing leaves and just being very careful not to be getting my hands into bud sites uh, where we might be uh, smearing or squishing trichomes. So as we can see here, just trying to do a good amount of defoliation um, all the way up and maybe we leave a couple couple leaves at the top that'll still absorb the sun but we're going to be trying to get most of these off of here. Naturally as you can see on these really bigger plants we, ha we have to sort of keep that in mind when working on the plants right like all these branches and stems way up here I might um, leave until harvest time when we're bucking the plants to remove those leaves as I'm likely to do more damage trying to remove leaves than I'm going to save by removing them early. So um, these are just sort of balance points we have to keep in mind. On smaller plants we can really work on those plants really effectively, get into areas and be very careful about touching buds and smearing trichomes. Whereas with much bigger plants like these you, you have to find the balance. So most any stems or branches that I have easy access to I'm going to be defoliating and anything that becomes a little bit too difficult I'm reaching, I risk falling into the plant, those I'm going to save until harvest. Obviously one thing that's going to be really important for cultivators is determining when is the ideal harvest window um, for when to take their plants off of the field and get them uh, all prepped and ready for solventless extraction. So for us, a few key indicators that the plant is going into senescence, which is uh, the phase of it sort of getting to the end of its life. Um, we can see the leaves are starting to change color here. At the top, we have some purple hues. As we go down the plant, we're seeing a lot of that green starting to lighten up. Um, so that tells us that the plant is getting ready for the end of its life and to get cut down. Uh, closer up you can also see that a lot of the uh, uh, pistils are starting to turn darker colors of orange. Um, so once again these are just a few telltale signs that the plant is getting near the end of its life. For us as solventless hash makers uh, what's going to be really important is finding that abscission point. So what, what I might do is I'll uh, take the bud and take a jeweler's loop and use that to magnify and get a closer look at the trichomes and really see that we have some nice fully formed heads uh, with a nice pinch point between the head and the stalk. Um, that pinch point is really what's going to allow us to easily break trichomes off of the stalk and get good yields and a good quality final product. Uh, we don't want to have to over agitate the material, end up with stalks or other contaminant in the final product. Today we're going to be harvesting some of the biscotti plants. As you can see here, uh, we're just harvesting the tops. We're going to give the lower buds another week or two to fully mature 
um, and see uh, if those are worth collecting or not. But so for today, we're just getting the tops and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I like to handle the plants and where I like to cut them and how I like to store them before they get transported off to the bucking area. So I like to grab the plant in between bud sites, generally lower down so I can get a good grip on it. And from there, I can make a nice clean cut and stack it into my bin with the buds facing upwards so that none of the flowers stacking on top of each other and that we're really doing our best to ensure maximum trichome retention. Another tip when uh, taking material out of the greenhouse and how we're gonna transport that material, you can see after I've cut a branch down, I'm uh, stacking everything with the buds facing upwards and the stems down in the bin. And uh, that really just reduces any contact points or risks of flower getting uh, smushed as uh, we start to build that stack up and up. And uh, this also makes it easier for the processing team as they can just pull a stem right out and start deleafing and getting to work there. So I'm going to grab a branch out of my uh, bin here and take that up. So you can see I'm always trying to hold stuff by the stem. And uh, here I'm gonna take my scissors, get rid of those leaves. I'm going to avoid cutting into the buds wherever I can. And so any leaves that are closer in, I'm gonna leave those on. Uh, because taking those off is only going to create potential risks for contaminant and removing them is not going to help our process all that much. So as you can see here, I'm just working my, my way down the plant, removing leaves and doing my best to get it as close to the stem as possible without going into the bud. As you can see, just using my fingers to twist the branch around and get access to all the leaves. And boom, here we have a, a fully de-leafed and ready for bucking stem. So another option for de-leafing is some people may opt to remove the leaves by hand. They might uh, find it faster and prefer working that way. So it's an, also an option. So with my right hand, I'm always going to be grabbing uh, the branch by the stem and then taking the leaf and giving it a quick tug just to remove it right away. And you just wanna be careful not to be getting your hands into the flowers and, and squishing or you know, smearing any of those trichomes that are on the flower there. So you can see, just getting rid of all those. Just a quick tug and we get that leaf right off of there. Now that we've got uh, all of our branches fully defoliated and uh, all of the leaves that we're going to remove off, we're now gonna move on to bucking. So I'm gonna show you guys a few of the different techniques I like to use while bucking. Uh, I've got all my material here. Uh, we're gonna be bucking into bags. I've already done a little bit. And um, we're gonna be filling these about halfway. So I'm just gonna be topping this off. And then once these get to four kilos, we're gonna be taking that to the freezer where we're gonna be leaving the bag open um, and allow that to freeze down for 12 to 24 hours before the bags get sealed and organized. Um, so here, as you can see, I'm gonna pull a, a branch out. I always try to hold things by the stem, usually a central point on the branch. And then from here, uh, wherever the bud has uh, its little stem connecting to the main branch, um, that's where I'm going to be cutting and removing the flower from the, from the main branch there. So here, I'm just gonna make a few little cuts, get those off. It's definitely really ideal to have sharp scissors and make clean cuts, um, as we'll reduce the amount of uh, open area and getting uh, potential contaminants into the final product there. Um, so there. Just removing all of that. And boom. From here, just gonna take these guys, trying to handle them as gently as possible, and put those into the bag. While hand bucking is obviously going to be uh, the most ideal way to get the buds off of the stems without creating contaminants, 
Uh, some people are at a scale where doing these things by hand, they just do not have the labor available. Um, or it is, you know, once again, just, just way too much. So uh, another tool we do have at our disposal is a bucking machine. And we're gonna look at uh, some of the ways that this can be used um, most optimally for solidness without ruining your final product. So we're gonna get the bucking machine started and I'm gonna show you guys how uh, we can use this uh, in the most effective way possible. So we're gonna get that turned on. The machine is now rolling. So as you can see here, we have all of our branches organized with the stems at the bottom and the flowers on top. Uh, we really try to organize our buds like this all the way through the process to reduce uh, flowers getting stacked on top of each other and such. We're going to take a stem that uh, fits the machine best. As you can see here, I have a good amount of stem at the bottom. So we can just get that into the hole of best fit and We'll move our hand forward as the stem or as the branch gets pulled into the machine and gently help the flowers down into the tote. So now we're at uh, the freezers that Earthwell Farms has on site. So here as you can see I've got my bag. It is labeled uh, with the strain, the batch number, and also the weight. This allows us to maintain inventory of all the stuff in the uh, reefers here. And so uh, we leave the bags open. That's gonna allow moisture to escape as uh, everything freezes. As these are uh, going in, this bag is going to be a little bit warmer uh, than the freezing temperatures inside of there. We really want to avoid any condensation freezing on top of the buds and creating frost. That's going to kill plant cells. And uh, before the biomass freezes, uh, what'll happen is that creates areas that rot is gonna start happening. Um, it's going to start wilting. And then when we put that mass into our ice water extraction, we end up with a lot more chlorophyll as well as reduced yields. So we really like to leave those bags open, get everything fully frozen in there before we go and seal up the bags for uh, storage until processing. I'll also mention it's really important not to vacuum seal any bags before or after freezing. Vacuum sealing is going to compact everything in there. And if uh, we vacuum seal before everything is frozen, we just have a lot of this wet, soft biomass that is just gonna get squished together, freeze as a brick, and if we vacuum seal after freezing, then everything is going to be hard and brittle in there. That's gonna crush a lot of that plant material, which is gonna create contaminants that may stick to trichomes or will end up in your wash bags when you are uh, collecting all of your hash there. So these are just little things we do uh, to really optimize the storage for solventless extraction and really just maintain uh, a high quality product from start to finish.